Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. It takes place. The question is how evolution occurs. That is the most important and the most interesting question as well. So I'll take a couple of examples to make you understand how evolution takes place. So the first example which I'll take is of the Darwin's finches. I'm sure you all know what are finches. They are small birds. So they are known as Darwin's finches. They were named after Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin did a lot of study on with respect to evolution. So he had done a lot of studies over this and he has given his theory of evolution. So Darwin's theory of evolution is the most accepted ones amongst all other previous theories. Now, while Darwin was doing all these studies on evolution, it once it so happened that he went to the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific, where he found a variety of finches. So, what are these finches? These are seed-eating birds, small birds which feed on seeds. So, now it so happened that long, long time back, millions of years back, a group of finches reached these Galapagos Islands, maybe by some accidental event, maybe by storm or by something, somehow in this island, a group of finches reached. So before that, there were no finches at all. So these finches reached this Galapagos Islands and what happened? The climate was extremely good I and mean, the climate was extremely suitable for these finches to survive. There were nobody to eat the finches, so there were no predators who could eat the finches and kill them off. So overall, everything was very good for the survival of the finches. So what happened? The finches started living a happy life. They were all happy. They started reproducing. So the number of finches kept on increasing. Because of fast reproduction, the number of finches increased so much that there was scarcity of food. It was something like it, the island was of limited area, right? So it could afford some limited number of finches. But now the number of finches becomes so high that there was scarcity of food. They were competing with each other for food. Now, when reproduction was taking place, so e e even in case of finches also, there are some variations involved in reproduction. It was seen that there were some kind of some finches who had a longer beak when compared to the other finches. To the normal finches which existed, they had a shorter beak. But there were some finches who had a longer beak. Now when this competition started, when, when they were not getting food, so each finch was fighting with the other one to get food and to survive. So when these finches saw that they have got a longer beak, they thought of making use of that longer beak. So since they had a long beak, they, they found that it was even easier for them to eat hard seeds, which the other finches could not. Even they were able to eat some worms present in the soil. So they started feeding on worms. Not only worms, they also started eating seeds which were very hard and which were not being broken by the finches with shorter beak. So gradually, the finches with a longer beak and the finches with a shorter beak, they were divided into two different categories. One of them fed only on the seeds, the one with the shorter beaks, whereas the other class which, who had a longer beak, they started feeding on worms and hard seeds. So now the competition reduced to some extent. Right? Because now all of them are not competing only for seeds. Half of them are feeding on seeds, half of them are feeding on worms. So now they got divided. Now they also started reproducing. So now there were many finches with longer beaks as well because longer beaks was something which was better for their survival. It was helping them to survive. So it was seen that when the finches started reproducing, there were finches with longer beaks. So even their the population of the finches with longer beaks increased because having a longer beak was an advantage for their survival. So it got classified into two groups and it also helped them to survive. 
Now each group started reproducing amongst themselves. Now again when this process of reproduction happens, again there is some variation involved, right? Because when again this long beak, the finches with longer beak will reproduce, there will be some variation somewhere. Sometimes there will be some variation in the feather, sometimes there will be some variation in the color. So gradually it was seen that with due course of time, many new varieties of finches started coming up. So the first thing was that since longer beak was an advantage to their survival, so it was seen that finches with longer beak were increasing in number. Earlier there were very few because only some of them had come up with longer beaks due to variations in reproduction. But later more finches with longer beaks were seen. Now as they kept on reproducing, more and more varieties of finches were seen. Some with different colors, some with different type of feather, some with a little bit of body structure difference. So in due course of time, there were too many types of finches. And then later, it was a great surprise to see that some of these different types of finches were not even capable of reproducing with the previous finches. So what do we mean when we say that they are not capable of reproducing? That means they have become a different species altogether. Because what is a species? A species is a group of organisms which are capable of reproducing with each other. For example, human beings, they all belong to the same species because they are capable of reproducing with each other. Similarly, all cats, they fall under one species because they can reproduce with each other. But if you take one cat and one bird, they will not be able to reproduce with each other. So they belong to different species. So in this case, it was seen that earlier these finches were all capable of reproducing amongst themselves. But later again with small small variations, some different types of finches started coming up. And it was seen that when one of these finch finches were made to reproduce with one of the, these finches, they were not capable of reproducing with each other which proved that they were all different species. And currently, if you believe me, currently there are almost 13 to 15 species of finches which exist on earth. So can you imagine earlier there were just one species of flinches. Now there are 13 to 15 species of flinches. So did this happen overnight? No. It took a long time. It was a gradual process. It was a continuous process. But over the time, with small, small variations happening here and there, taken together, it gave rise to new species of flinches, right? So this is how evolution occurs. This is how small, small changes can give rise to a big change. And that big change is what is termed as evolution. So this is what is evolution. So this was the first example. Now let us talk about some more examples so that the idea becomes more clear to you. Let us take the example of beetles. I'm sure all of you know what are beetles. They are small insects which you generally see in uh, plants or bushy areas. So let us look at this beetles example. Now let us suppose in some bushy area there were some red beetles living there. Now with the process of reproduction more and more beetles were produced. Now, due to a small variation somewhere during sexual reproduction, one beetle was formed which was green in color. So here you can see there is one green beetle here. So this was nothing but a result of variation. So even now most of the beetles are all red. There is just one beetle which is green in color. Now what happened? These birds like crow or some other birds, they started eating beetles. So whenever they come near the bushes, they started picking up the beetles and ate them. Now for this crow, it became very difficult to detect the presence of the green beetle amongst the green bushes, right? Because it was of the same color. So it, it was little difficult for the crow to detect that green beetle. Now with due course of time, it was seen that most of the red beetles were eaten up by birds. So their numbers kept decreasing. But the green beetle which was existing, that also underwent reproduction. So some more green beetles were also formed. So here in this picture you can see that the number of red beetles and the number of green beetles 
are almost the same right now gradually it so happened that the number of red beetles vanished because they were all eaten up by the crows so we were left only with the green beetles so now do you see a change here so the story all started with all red beetles and you arrived at a situation where you have all green beetles so what is this change this change is an example of evolution so now let us suppose now the same area of the bushes are all occupied by green beetles now again they are also reproducing now again as a result of some variation maybe one beetle is a blue is blue in color so we have one blue beetle amongst those many green beetles now again let us suppose that due to some accidental event let us suppose some big animal came and stepped on that bush as a result of which all the green beetles were killed so do you see here all the green beetles are gone so we are only left with the blue beetles so what will happen after some time the same bushes will now be covered with all blue beetles so you see we all started with something it was all occupied with red beetles due to some or the other change there was a time when there was all green beetles again due to some accidental event there were all blue beetles so this change that means the green or the blue color it was not the original color which was present in the population before it was an inherited trait i mean maybe one blue or one green beetle was formed initially it was just because of variation and then later the same trait got inherited when they re they reproduced more organisms and more and more green or blue beetles were produced right so this is known as evolution this is one of the very good examples of evolution so the transformation from green red to green to blue is a good example now the frequency of an inherited trait changes over generations this is what we conclude from this so which is the inherited trait we are talking about the inherited trait here is the color of the beetle so the which color of beetle will have more frequency that changes over generations like sometimes the red beetles will be more sometimes green beetles will be more sometimes blue beetles will be more now again it is quite possible that when these blue beetles reproduce sometimes again a red beetle comes up so again the population of the red beetle will also increase so it keeps on changing that way so here we will look at some of the causes which gave rise to evolution some of the reasons because of which evolution happened so if you look at the first case where the red bed beetles got completely removed and it got occupied by all green beetles why did that happen because the green color was an advantage for the survival of the beetles because if they are green in color then crows will not be able to eat them so green color was an advantage for the beetles so the number of green beetles increased suddenly and at the same time the red beetles were also eaten up as i said evolution is a process where things happen for better so it was better green color was better for the survival of the beetles so things happened in that direction now in the second case when the green beetles got replaced by the blue beetles what happened it was the accidental survival of blue beetles i mean it it was just an accident that an animal came and stepped on all the green beetles so this accidental survival of blue beetles resulted in an, another evolution right so there are certain mechanisms which actually drive evolution there are certain causes which actually make evolution occur so we will discuss them also in one of the coming slides let us look at another example we will see here how dogs evolved from grey wolves like what we see today as dogs maybe everywhere we can see them if we go out of our houses in the nearby streets and all we get to see dogs right and we see there are so many different varieties of dogs available right 
But if we go back in time, we see that there were no dogs before. It were only the grey wolves. And dogs, dogs came into existence from these grey wolves. So if you look at them, these were the grey wolves which were generally seen in the forest areas. So what happened was that human beings started breeding them. So human beings were the ones who guided the reproduction of the grey wolves. So what they did, they selected the wolves with desirable characteristics. Whichever characteristics or whichever traits they liked, they selected those wolves and started breeding them with another desirable wolves. So what happens? Puppies were produced and then they all they kept the puppies with the most desirable traits because they found that they, they saw that when they started breeding wolves of different characters different types of puppies were formed so now they choose the puppies they want they chose the puppies which they liked and kept those puppies so as a result a time came when a variety of dogs were formed so when I talk of desirable traits, it can be the size of a dog, big or small. It can be the height of the dog, whether it has to be tall or it has to be very short. It can be the kind of hair which it should have, whether it should be hairy or furry or it should not have any hair on its body. So all these things are the traits. So human beings were the breeders in this case. So human beings were the one who selected which breed of uh, the wolf has to be mated with which breed of the wolf. So human beings were the ones who were responsible for this evolution. But this is also an example of evolution because here also changes took place. But the thing is that here human beings were the ones who brought about this evolution. Right? So I hope that with these three examples the idea of evolution is clear to you now. So what is evolution? With generations over generations, the changes in the inherited traits give rise to evolution. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.